All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to boot a Raspberry Pi 4 off of a flash drive instead of the usual micro SD card that you normally boot off of. All right, so first off, why would you wanna do this? Well, micro SD cards are notoriously prone to failures. At the end of the day, it's not really a question of if, but really when, if you run one long enough. And while this is really not that big of a deal when you're using a Raspberry Pi for testing and setting up your own things and stuff like that, However, where it does become a really big deal is if you want a long-term automation process that is resilient. So one of the biggest reasons is, say you want to set up a Raspberry Pi as an offsite backup. Well, if that SD card fails, you're going to have to go in and reformat the entire thing and rebuild it. Instead, you can boot that exact same operating system off of a flash drive, which are far more resilient, or you could even use an actual SSD, which is going to give you even longer resiliency. So this is a really good solution if you'd like to use your Pi for more long-term projects and really don't want to have the failure rate of the micro SD cards affecting your Pi. Another thing is ease of use and speed. Honestly, I've got a ton of flash drives lying around and they're a lot easier to throw in my computer than a micro SD card is. Plus they're generally a lot faster and you can get much larger sizes. So I do this because I'm constantly formatting and so I'm going to be using flash drives, which are way easier to identify and store than those little micro SD cards which go everywhere. So this is currently only available on Raspberry Pi 4s, if you'd like to do a true boot just off of the flash drive. If you have a previous model of a Raspberry Pi and you'd like to be able to do this, there's different tutorials on how to do that, but essentially what you do is you still have that micro SD card in there. However, basically what it does is it tells the operating system as it's booting up to, okay, as soon as it loads this program, it starts to load off of the flash drive instead of that micro SD card. This means you don't have nearly as many writes to that micro SD card, so it's less likely to fail. But if it fails, it's still not gonna be able to boot up due to the fact that it has that command to boot up. So that's just one thing to note. But with the new Raspberry Pi bootloader software, you can just do it straight without even a micro SD card in your Raspberry Pi 4. And so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and show you. All right, and so for this tutorial, all you're going to need is a Raspberry Pi, power supply, a flash drive, and you still do need a micro SD card to set up the very first time, and network access, because we're gonna to have to update a Raspberry Pi. All right, so I've got my Pi here, and I've already got Raspberry Pi OS loaded on here, and so we're gonna go ahead and boot it up, and I'm gonna go ahead and SSH into it. So I'm just gonna set that up now. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and update the package links on our Raspberry Pi. So I've gone ahead and SSH as you can see here. So I'm just gonna run a sudo apt update. And this is going to update the package links. This is not going to actually update any software. It's just going to update the links for where software exists on the internet. And so it's a good thing to run every couple of days whenever you're updating packages because that way you know you're getting the most recent version of everything. All right, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a sudo at full upgrade to fully upgrade our operating system on our Raspberry Pi. And this could take a little while. And this is really important to make sure that we get the new bootloader, which was released only about a month ago. All right, so that took quite a while, but now our Raspberry Pi operating system has now been fully upgraded. That means we're gonna have that new bootloader. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the Raspberry Pi to first look for a micro SD card to boot off of, and if it doesn't find one or if it fails, it will then boot to the flash drive. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna do sudo raspi.config. And so all we're gonna do here is go into advanced options, go down to boot order and we're going to select USB boot and I'll say boot from USB device if SD card boot fails and we're just going to click on that and click enter. All right and so now we've got that done. So now we can just go ahead and click finish and we'll just go ahead and reboot now. So now it's going to go ahead and reboot and once it boots back in I'll SSH back in. All right, and so now our Raspberry Pi is booted back up and I've SSH back in. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to make sure that the EEPROM gets updated by editing it, but not actually editing it. We're just going to say that we edited it so it makes sure to flash a new EEPROM to there. 
And to do that, we're going to type sudo dash e rat rpy dash. And we're going to edit it. And so this right here is the eeproms configuration file, essentially, and all the inputs we have into it. And really what we're looking at right here is this right here, the all boot order. So if you read the documentation, boot order F41 means that first we're going to look for a appropriate micro SD card to boot off of. And then if that fails, we will look for a flash drive to boot off of, which is exactly what you want. If you wanted additional customization here, you could do that, but it's really not necessary for what we're doing. And so to do that, we're just going to hit control X to exit. And now it's going to make sure that the EEPROM gets updated. So we're just going to do a sudo reboot. And this will make sure to update the EEPROM. And so now all we need to do is hook up our flash drive to our computer and load the Raspberry Pi operating system on it. So I'm going to do that now. And so all we're going to do here is I'm going to select the Raspberry Pi OS Lite. And I'm going to choose this flash drive that I just plugged in my computer right here. And we're going to write to it. And it's going to take quite a while as it normally does, but it will generally go faster than if you're writing to a micro SD card, which is good. All right, so now it's finally verified the software and it automatically ejected it. So I just plugged it back in and now I'm just going to write SSH to it. That way it has a file in there called SSH. So when it boots up, it will automatically enable SSH to have a fully headless setup. So now I'm just going to eject it and we're going to go ahead and plug it into our Pi. All right, so I've got my Raspberry Pi right here. And as you can see, I've currently got the SD card in there and I'm just going to go ahead and pull it out. And instead I'm going to plug in the flash drive directly into one of the USB ports. If it's USB three, you should plug in the blue ports as it'll be faster, but it's really not that big of a deal though. It will be considerably faster. And now I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on. I will also say it's sometimes nice to have a monitor with this because sometimes it does fail to boot and it will tell you that it's doing that. But right now I just have to trust it and hope that I see it on the network. All right. It appears to be up. So that means it's worked. Let's go ahead and SSH in and it's going to drop an error because I've got signing turned off. I really just need to turn sign turned off. Basically what this is saying is, Hey, you've SSH in this before. Last time it had a different host key, which is done to make sure that nobody switches out the machine and steals my password or anything like that. But it's quite annoying if you're somebody like me, who's constantly flashing new raspberry Pis and always having to delete this file. So I just do a sudo RM and the file path. And then it forgets that it ever existed. And now I'll just enter the first time login, which is raspberry. And we're in. We are now booting completely off of a flash drive without a micro SD card plugged in at all. And so now this is just going to work and it's going to be a much more resilient solution if you want to have long-term projects. All right. Well, really that's all there is to that video. Go ahead and leave any other Raspberry Pi tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.